Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Ambarish Mitra, founder and CEO of Blippa. Uh, and as you see uh, on the slide here, it says uh, AR and computer vision and impact uh, on uh, AR city, city life. But before we dive a little bit into that detail, today one of my roles is to educate you slightly about how truly AR works and why is it important and almost make you semi-technology geniuses. You, you'll go and show off to other people once you get out of here. Uh, secondly is to inspire you. Uh, and lastly, to show you stuff uh, you've never seen before. Uh, we have some sort of a world's first uh, kind of announcement today. So moving on, uh, for those of you who don't know in the room uh, what Blipper is about, that's the only point I'll talk about Blipper today, uh, is uh, we are a computer vision, uh, an AI-based company. Uh, and for last six years, we've been trying to index the entire physical world. That's our vision. Uh, and we want you and technology companies, and individuals and businesses to have this platform on top of which you can add your own content. So our vision is that if the whole world becomes a platform, the physical world, uh, that is the promise of augmented reality. Uh, you could uh, engage with it in a whole new way. So, but why is this so important? So let's talk a little bit about the history. This is the evolution of hardwares uh, in computing device. Uh, and we are seeing a strange correlation of uh, intelligence and our cognitive function to evolution of hardware. So uh, before, of course, desktop computing was a traditional input-based device, and it wasn't very ergonomic, but we still use it. But eventually, majority goals of computer makers or thinkers in the tech space that actually the purpose of computers is to act as assistants in our life, and they need to become almost more human like us. And of course, artificial intelligence is playing a big role there. So we're already seeing how touch is a human function, and touch-based computing became really dominant from mid-2005. Uh, and then uh, to hear and to talk is a very core human function, and that's when natural language processing with uh, Siri, Cortana, uh, and now Alexa, they've all become very dominant forms. And the promise of AR and VR is fundamentally a computer vision problem. Many people still do not realize that augmented reality is a subset of computer vision as an industry, not the other way around. I mean, computer vision is like the ocean, and AR is a small island in it. It's important to note the most important word in augmented reality is not the augmentation piece, is the reality piece. Unless computers understand reality, which is through your cameras, how can we scale uh, augmentation of it? And just for definition purposes, if any of you who don't know what augmented reality means and what am I talking about in the first place, augmented reality is in a way enhancement of reality. You need to have something real in front of you, and the camera looks at it, and then it adds a layer of content. It, in a way, it enhances it. And AR and VR are not the same thing, though often coupled together. You know, VR is almost escaping from reality. It has nothing to do with what's immediately in front of you in, in most cases. So uh, moving on, uh, it's important to make you understand that what's the role uh, of computer vision and artificial intelligence in augmented reality. It's an absolutely key function. If we are to understand reality, computer vision will play a big role. So this is getting a bit, little bit academic, but one of the biggest pieces of research, and Blipper uh, is one of the companies which is endeavoring a lot of this research, is a semantic understanding. And, and AR has particularly two very different branches, but from a semantic point of view, we want to understand the world. You know, when I'm looking at this world, there are two functions happening in my eyes and my brain. One is understanding it. So people wearing clothes, looks like audience, their lights. I'm almost continuously figuring out what's going on. 
The second aspect of it is actually geometrically understanding the world. So here's a stage, there's a flat space here, there's a flat surface there, there are curtains there, there's a ceiling, all these different angles. And augmented reality has actually come from two different forces here. So whenever you're hearing the stuff uh, Apple is doing with ARKit or Google is doing with AR code, is to do with the latter, you know, where they've made the plane into an interactive surface. You can make a robot dance uh, on this stage. You can do a catwalk in the middle of this room. You can put virtual objects in the real world. But at scale, you really need to understand the world. Another side of augmented reality is how can you make existing objects into virtual interactions? Uh, that's something, one of the things we are focused on uh, and, and, and doing a lot of work. And in an ideal world, these two would blend, where semantic understanding and also geometric understanding becomes together. And today, uh, I will give you guys uh, a product announcement which is using uh, both aspects uh, of it. So remember, our, our vision uh, is to index the whole world. But what I like to do now, I'll take a, like a short two-minute demo break uh, and, and show you guys in definition um, what these two concepts mean. We need to truly understand these two concepts before we move forward uh, in the presentation. So if I could move uh, to the phone demo, please. All right, you can see my phone uh, on the big screen. Uh, I'm going to open uh, the, the Blipper app here. And uh, all these, um, I'm going to restart it. Sorry, I'm having a bit of a connection issue. Let's restart it again. OK, still having a connection issue. I'm going to bear with it one more second. Let me, let me come out of the Wi-Fi altogether and see. Uh, what if I disable the Wi-Fi? OK. So um, uh, we're on 3G connection. Uh, so you can see uh, immediately what's happening here. This is a real-time uh, classifier uh, driven by artificial intelligence. And it's trying to describe whatever this is looking at. It's not augmenting, but in a way, Imagine if I had to make each one of you interactive, this would work. And it's saying crowd, audience, competition, many people. And another semantic understanding of it, if I position this very famous photograph of the famous Afghan girl on National Geographic cover, uh, you would see, uh, first of course, recognizes the image, and then it transforms into how that famous girl looks today. You know, she aged by a few years. This is, a, this is a beautiful, subtle example of uh, augmented reality. So first, understand the world, then change that world. A, a good use case. The next use case I'd like to show you is, uh, oh, that's her name, Sharbat Kul. It's a, it's a face recognition engine as well. So if you, if you put it at uh, like majority of uh, public figures in the world, uh, it should be able to uh, recognize each one of them in almost 100 millisecond real time. So these, are, these all forms under the semantic understanding. Now, I, I come out of this app, and I'm going to demonstrate uh, altogether a different app, um, an interesting app some cool people are working on. This is an example of geometric AR, where it's not recognizing anything. It's all about surface area. So if I, if I come out and... Uh, uh, if I am going to choose an interesting character here, I just hold on one second. Um, let's say, if I want to, yeah, exactly. If I really want to make this robo dance on this stage, uh, uh, you can see what's happening. You know, I can literally go near that robo. I can walk all around it. And it's focused in an arbitrary position, uh, literally there. Or if I want to make this uh, Moose character work, walk up the stage uh, from the audience uh, and wave at you guys. Uh, 
it has, it has nothing to do with immediate reality. It is all to do with surface area, OK? You get this idea. So that's, that's the demo for now. Let's move back to the presentation, and I'll come back and show you something else a moment later. So back to the presentation, please. So using the technology, we have understood the world, and we've also understood geometry. Imagine bringing this together and doing it at an absolutely large scale. So what we are announcing today is a new product. Uh, it's, it's a beta, so have patience with us. Uh, it's, um, it's called uh, AR City. We are making entire cities interactive. Uh, and when I'm talking about entire city, it's on an absolutely crazy large scale. Uh, for navigation and exploration purposes. I'll explain a little more detail to you in a moment, but please check out this video uh, first. Here you go. Cool. So uh, this goes live uh, on the App Store now, uh, literally today, uh, AR City. Uh, we're, doing, we're launching it with initially 300 cities worldwide, which is pretty much uh, most of major cities in the world. The technology would really, really work well uh, on a one square meter radius uh, in San Francisco, Mountain View, and London because of some technical reasons. If someone's interested to know, I can cover. But this technology has, it's an ensemble of five things going on. The most important breakthrough here is a technology called visual positioning system. What it means, it actually uses imagery like human beings and totally indexes entire cities by one square meter radius and what GPS doesn't do. Typically, a GPS accuracy is between eight meter, sorry, 16 meters to 25 meter radius, but visual positioning system brings that down to between one meter to four meter radius because the feedback is based on what you're seeing, not by just satellite's location, which is a really, really big change. And this indexation has happened in a lot more sophisticated way in cities like London and San Francisco uh, as a beta test than the rest of the world. Uh, hence, the results are better. But it is an amalgamation of several complex things going on, a concept called uh, visual inertia odometry, uh, which is like a light slam. Uh, and, and how the technology works, it, it, when you're walking on the street, it makes the user choose any arbitrary position uh, and almost like creates an invisible point cloud around you and then tracks your movement against the real world and matches it against images and GPS. And a huge amount of complex things is going on, but it's a combination of computer vision-based AI, GPS, visual positioning system, knowledge graph, all the labeling that appears on top of the building. So when you're walking around, not only will you know the name of the roads label literally superimposed on the street, but you can also explore. You can name, know the name of the shops, key, key important buildings, even mundane addresses like you know, post office or your own home address. Uh, and it solves a very interesting problem because a lot of people use maps, but doesn't mean the map knows what you're looking at. That's the key thing to note here. You know, the map knows where you are, but doesn't mean it, it tells you 
literally sticking on the wall, that's building 555 on California Street, or like that's the restaurant is on the seventh floor of that building. So what this technology will do, that it allows people to explore and navigate the city in a lot more interesting way, but of course very soon this would be available as a platform for, for people in the industries of real estate or building citywide gaming engines. If you want to do, a, I don't know, a treasure hunt or a zombie hunt, hide things within a city or uh, autonomous driving, the list goes on. The implications are huge, but we are launching this as initially a case study that let's make a simple case study that if you want to go from point A to B in a city and you want that path to be mapped on your journey, uh, that's what uh, it will do. And of course, there are interesting uh, content layer, and it has a library of third-party libraries, so there's a huge amount of digital content, a lot of you have, and if you want to bring all that content into the city and place it in different places like food reviews, theater reviews, cinemas, or even literally virtual characters trying to sell you stuff, uh, all that uh, is possible. So I like to tell you that I, I couldn't give you the live demo because this is not a street. Uh, so I recorded a video uh, last evening uh, and this morning in Lisbon uh, while using the application. So could we go back to the uh, demo screen again, please? Just to give you an idea how this really works uh, in the real world. So uh, this was me uh, walking in, in uh, one of the streets uh, in Lisbon uh, last evening. And you were able to see uh, literally my path. I, I had entered an address where I want to go, uh, superimposed. This makes it look really simple, but it's extremely complex to maintain a map uh, on top of a road and maintain the geometry and the uh, information symmetry of it while you're constantly moving. Remember, this is not a map. This is a map on top of the real world, which is a a lot different computational complexity, and it's a big area of research right now for computer vision scientists uh, around the world. Uh, and I, I want to show you something even I, this was working when at night. So this is again uh, me walking, and I'll like even fast forward parts of it just to show you, like, that's, that restaurant is called Gurkha, uh, and it's literally labeled on top of it. Uh, and and you, you can go from a lot of interesting places. So please try it out. Bear with it. It's new. This is a beta launch. It's the world's first. But this technology will significantly improve from here onwards and could become the future of navigation with AI and AR. Thank you very much.